Welcome. This is Dr. Len Calabrese from the R.J. Fazenmeyer Center for Clinical Immunology at the Cleveland Clinic, and this is another episode of Rheumatology Virtual Grand Rounds. These are case-based presentations designed to explore clinical problems that occur in real practice. Today, I am very, very pleased to have Alexandra Villaforte, uh, one of my uh, longtime colleagues uh, here in the Department of Rheumatic and Immunologic Diseases at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, Alex has been interested in uh, many aspects of rheumatology, She's certainly noted in our vasculitis center, but has uh, been working in the area of crystal-induced arthritis um, as well. I've asked her to uh, review for us some of the dynamic changes occurring in the area of managing acute and chronic gout. So, Alex, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Today I will be discussing the managing, management of acute and chronic gout from simple to complex patients. And the learning objectives of this talk include to describe the basic clinical pharmacology of commonly employed drugs for acute gout attacks, Number two, to recognize how common the comorbidities influence drug choice for treating acute gout, and assess when hyperuricemic therapy is indicated and be able to initiate such therapy in the uncomplicated patient with gout. During this talk, I will discuss several cases to illustrate some of the challenges associated with treating acute and chronic gout. Gout is a very common form of arthritis. It can be defined as a self-limited attack of synovial inflammation caused by an excess of body uric acid. Tissue deposition of monosodium rate crystals is the central feature and results in the clinical manifestations of synovitis, and it's the central feature of gout, which actually causes gout. Um, consider the most common inflammatory arthritis in the U.S., with an estimated prevalence of 3.9%, gout has a major negative impact in the quality of life and work productivity. Uh, as I will show to you later, gout management can be particularly challenging in many patients who present with comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease. These conditions, as well as the long list of medications usually taken by these patients, frequently have an effect on the treatment choices for gout. Uh, before we address treatment, I'd like to uh, take a minute to just um, approach the diagnosis of gout. The initial and foremost important step in the approach of the patient with possible gout is to actually correctly confirm or establish the diagnosis of gout. Let's consider a 50-year-old man who presents with right knee joint pain and swelling for one day. On exam, his knee is very tender, warm, and has a moderate joint effusion. He reports two similar episodes in the past involving the same knee with complete resolution within one week. At that time, he did not seek medical evaluation and took an over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Following the first two episodes, he was told that his serum uric acid level was 9 milligrams per deciliter, and that's why he was told he had gout. So the question is, what is the most appropriate diagnostic approach for this patient? A, knee radiography, B, prior history of acute arthritis of short duration and good response to NSAIDs is sufficient to make a diagnosis of gout and you establish the diagnosis of gout. C, atherosynthesis of the knee to evaluate the synovial fluid for the presence of monosodium urate crystals. Or D, an elevated serum uric acid in the setting of recurrent acute monoarthritis is diagnostic of gout. What do you think is the correct answer? Well, the most appropriate diagnostic approach for this patient with um, monoarticular arthritis is atherosynthesis of that joint, atherosynthesis of this knee to evaluate the synovial fluid for the presence of monosodium urate crystals. The patient's history and his current symptoms 
are very suggestive of gout. However, identification of urate crystals in the synovial fluid under polarizing light microscopy is the gold standard for confirming the diagnosis of gout, as it will differentiate gout from calcium pyrophosphate dehydrated associated arthritis and also other causes of acute arthritis. Because of its low sensitivity and specificity in the diagnosis of gout, the serum uric acid level should not be used to confirm or exclude gout, and that is not the correct answer. In order to better understand the treatment of acute gout attacks, we will discuss two cases here. We will review the initial treatment of an acute gout attack, and also we will discuss the prophylaxis of acute gout attacks during treatment with urate-lowering therapy. Prophylaxis therapy is particularly useful when initiating or changing the dose of urate-lowering agents. A 42-year-old man presents to you with acute left ankle pain and swelling. Arthrocentesis of the ankle is performed and monosodium urate crystals are seen in the synovial fluid. His serum creatinine is 0.8 milligrams per deciliter. What is the best treatment for this patient's acute gout attack? A, oral corticosteroid, B, oral colchicine, C, oral NSAIDs, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, D, intraarticular corticosteroid injection, or E, all of the above. The best approach for this patient with acute monoarthritis case of gout attack is actually all of the above. The case I just present is that of a monoarticular gout attack where most frequently monotherapy is given. The choice of an initial agent should be based on severity of pain, number of joints involved, individual factors such as comorbidities, and the medication interactions. Most patients can be treated with one medication. However, combination therapy with two agents is sometimes used in severe cases when there's multiple joint involvement. All the treatment above were correct, and they include either high dose of non steroidal anti-inflammatory or systemic corticosteroids, oral colchicine, or intraarticular when monoarticular. All of the options shown in this case are considered appropriate therapy as they are all effective and there has been no controlled trials comparing these agents. Observation from clinical practice has taught us that full or high doses of NSAIDs are necessary to control an acute gout attack. The AGREE trial has shown that low-dose colchicine is effective in acute gout, that is, when taken within 12 hours of onset of the acute attack. That's how the trial was designed. A loading dose of 1.2 milligrams is followed by a dose of 0.6 milligrams one hour later. Both systemic and intraarticular corticosteroids are effective, and, cho and the choice of one or another is usually based on the number of joints involved. When one or two large joints are involved, intraarticular corticosteroids are practical and effective. Oral methylprednisolone dose pack can be used at times. The acute gout attack should uh, ideally uh, be treated soon after initial symptoms. An important aspect of treatment is that the rapid initiation of medication soon after the onset of symptoms may decrease the severity and duration of the attack. Therefore, patients should be educated to start treatment following the first signs and symptoms of an acute gout attack. And this is an important aspect of gout treatment, that is patient education about the disease and its treatment. Let's consider a different clinical scenario where a 50-year-old male with a confirmed diagnosis of gout and four episodes of acute attacks in the last year, is started on urate lowering therapy with allopurinol, 100 milligrams a day, and his serum creatinine is one milligram per deciliter. What do you think is the most appropriate therapy for prevention of recurrent acute attacks of gout? Colchicine, 0.6 milligram twice a day, 
low dose non-steroid anti-inflammatory, low dose of oral corticosteroid, continue the allopurinol alone with escalation of the dose to achieve the target serum uric acid level. What would you think would be the most appropriate approach? The correct answer for this case is colchicin 0.6 milligram twice a day. Remember that I said that in this case the patient creatinine was 1.0 milligram per deciliter, meaning that he has a normal kidney function. Treating the acute attacks of gout will not prevent gout from progressing to chronic arthritis. And it is necessary to prevent as we escalate the dose of the urate-lowering treatment. Uh, this solution of crystal deposits leads to a reduction in acute attacks, and, and the uric uric acid level should be below the threshold for the urate saturation, which is 6.7 milligrams per deciliter. And the appropriate target has been determined in clinical trials as less than 6 milligrams per deciliter. Prophylax is very important as patients are at a higher risk for acute attacks when initiating this kind of therapy to lower the uric acid in the serum. Oral colchicin is the agent, the agent of choice in a patient with a normal renal function given that it is effective and has a low side effect profile. Side effect profile. The dose should be lowered and sometimes the medication should be used with caution if patients have a decreased renal function because of its increased toxicity in this setting. And although low dose of NSAIDs can be used in this scenario as well, the GI toxicity that can come from the chronic use of this medication may be a limiting factor and sometimes may need to be prevented. Given its long-term toxicity, low-dose corticosteroids are usually avoided and reserved for a situation when there is a contraindication to colchicine and NSAIDs. So not usually the first option given its long-term toxicities, such as diabetes. So although lowering serum uric acid level is key to the therapy to prevent gout from progressing to chronic arthritis, um, it is important to make sure that the dose of allopurinol is increased and escalated to reduce the serum uric acid level to the target. Like I said before, the target would be 6.7 milligrams per deciliter. The prophylaxis of the acute attack is important both when initiating but also when the dose has been increased as is the risk of acute gout attacks during that period of time is much higher. Colchicine has been shown to reduce the frequency and severity of the attacks and is usually the first option as mentioned before. The duration of the prophylaxis therapy varies from patient to patient and is determined by features of persistent disease. So if there is clinical evidence of gout, the therapy should be continued as the risk persists, as long as there is clinical evidence of gout, such as the presence of TOFI, the presence of recent or recurrent acute gout attacks, or evidence of chronic gouty arthritis, an increased risk of gout attacks it still exists, and prophylaxis should be continued. Another situation where there's a higher risk of an acute gout attack is during escalation of urate-lowering medication when serum urate target has not yet been achieved, and then we still um, predict that the dose of allopurinol or other medication use needs to be increased. In our last case in this talk, I would like to consider a 72-year-old male with hypertension and a confirmed diagnosis of gout and a history of four episodes of acute attacks in the last year. He was recently started on urate-lowering therapy with allopurinol. His serum creatinine is 1.8 milligrams per deciliter, and he now presents with an acute left knee, right ankle, and first toe, severe pain and swelling, similar to his past episodes of acute gout. The most appropriate therapy for this patient at this time 
with this acute attack would be to stop the allopurinol he has been taking or to lower, to give him a low dose of NSAIDs, oral colchicine 0.6 milligrams twice a day, or a corticosteroid, or intraarticular corticosteroid. The most appropriate therapy for this patient at this time would be oral corticosteroid, and we'll go over all these options to try to explain why would this be the safest medication at this time. Stopping the allopurinol, as suggested by the first option, would be the incorrect answer, and it should not be done during a acute attack of gout. In the setting of a decreased renal function, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication should be avoided. Oral colchicin 0.6 milligrams twice a day is unlikely to be effective in acute gout and may increase toxicity in the setting of having a decreased renal function. Corticosteroid is likely the safest agent for this patient given his decreased renal function and although intraarticular corticosteroid is useful for monoarthritis, it's not a very practical choice when there's multiple joints involved, and therefore that's why the choice of giving him oral corticosteroid. Um, recurrent gout attacks and chronic gout uh, occurs as a natural progression of untreated disease when patients present with multiple acute attacks. Patient education on diet, lifestyle, treatment goals, understanding the disease, such as the target serum uric acid level, and the comorbidities that can affect the gout treatment is really key in managing gout. The better the patient is educated about his condition and how to manage it, uh, the sooner treatment will be placed and uh, started, and uh, patient adherence to, to therapy will be much better. The potential medication interaction has an impact on the choice and the dose of agents used on the treatment of gout. And one example of that is in patients who are taking anti-transplant rejection medications that commonly interfere or interact with colchicine and allopurinol, for example. Comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease and chronic renal insufficiency will also impact the treatment of chronic gout which for most patients applies on a lifelong urate-lowering therapy. Now, urate-lowering therapy, first-line therapy, uh, includes two options. Either allopurinol or febuxostat is recommended, they are recommended as first-line to reduce the serum uric acid level in gout. As mentioned before, the recommended level, the target is below six, milligrams per deciliter, and for some patients with severe tophaceous gout, it may be necessary to reduce the serum uric acid level to below 5. Regular monitoring of the serum uric acid level is needed to stop dose escalation once the target is achieved and to guarantee that the target is maintained. Escalate dose of allopurinol as needed to reduce the serum uric acid level should be performed uh, even in patients with reduced renal function. It can be done cautiously with um, slow and small increments of those uh, increase over time, but should be done to also achieve the same target level of serum uric acid of the low six and sometimes doses higher than 300 milligrams are necessary, not infrequently, actually. And the use of um, allopurinol in patients with uh, decreased renal function should be uh, continually monitored by the complete blood cell count and renal function itself. And if patients using colchicine with some degree of renal function impairment, the creatinine phosphokinase should also be monitored, and the colchicine dose is usually lowered when necessary. 
I hope this overview has added some important insights in the management of acute and chronic gout, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Alex. That was uh, an outstanding review. You know, there are a few areas in rheumatology, I think, that are as vibrant as the field of crystal-induced arthritis, particularly uh, the area of gout. Uh, this is quite a dramatic change uh, since there have been no new treatment uh, for gout in decades and decades until recently. Uh, I also will point out that the American College of Rheumatology has just released um, their new uh, guidelines for the treatment of gout that are in a case-based vignette uh, format as well, and I encourage everyone uh, to go to the website to download those. I think the points you made about treating gout are uh, all important, that it is uh, uh, being managed uh, all over the map. Uh, rheumatologists rarely get at patients with acute gout unless it's in a hospital setting, and I think we have a lot to offer. I also believe that the long-term morbidity from gout uh, is uh, 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 formidable and that more aggressive use of existing uricosurics um, uh, will uh, alleviate a lot of that, and we have uh, new drugs in the pipeline for people who are intolerant uh, of uricosurics and uh, hypouricemic uh, therapy, uh, such as with allopurinol, and for patients uh, with the worst forms of gout, chronic, tophaceous, heavy load, uh, we now have some light at the end of the tunnel uh, that recombinant uricase um, offers something. So thank you very much and we uh, look forward to having you back.